I feel my body run out of oxygen. And because of that, it gets very tight. It starts to cramp up and my body starts to contort in ways that I didn't think were possible. It's very uncomfortable. It's like having someone, a very, very overweight person on top of you, pulling your arms back and twisting it and your fingers. And it was uh, terrifying. It felt like someone had a noose on top of all of that around my lungs and they were pulling it so tight that it was gripping, cleaving to my heart and just it's a very constricting, suffocating experience. I'm not even under the water yet. After a while, I start to sink. And let's see if I can remember was a, some time ago, which one of my senses disappeared first. I believe it was my sense of feeling. No, wait, my sense of taste. I couldn't taste the chemicals anymore. That was a cause for concern. And then I couldn't feel the temperature of the water anymore. <clears throat> Welcome to the Praise the Sun podcast, where I am honored to have a master level astral projector on this episode, Ryan JC, Ryan James Cropper. You guys are in for an amazing show. Let's get this started. How are you, Ryan? How you doing? I'm feeling good. Feeling good. Just posted a video on my YouTube channel yesterday, I think, talking about my most recent astral projection attempt. And do I say attempt? It was a successful <laughs> period of time in the morning where I bumped into my dog, which was nice because he died some time ago of colon cancer. And so oh, it's wow. good to see him still, you know, walking about in the astral plane. Yeah. Interesting. Um, wow. I wasn't expecting that. So could you talk a little bit about that? Like do, do when animals pass over, do they also kind of follow the same process as humans where they kind of, well, actually I don't know what the process is because I don't remember, but I would assume that you do. Um, do they kind of just go into the light or can they like, why, why, is, why would, why was he still active in the astrals? Yeah. Similar process yeah. to people in that once they're out, they're a little disorientated, a little bit confused and they might even look, you know, to match their state of mind, look a little disorientated too. Maybe their eyes will be moving about on their face. Maybe they'll be happy to see you one second and miserable the next or angry the next. Mm -hmm. it, it tends to be the same thing for humans and pets. The only thing I haven't seen when it came to an animal uh, passing on is an animal experiencing their life review. I see it when people pass on. But with animals, they tend to just wander their their domain, you know, your house. And in my case, when my dog first died, I saw him going for the food underneath the sink, kitchen sink. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Um, so uh, could you briefly explain what uh, astral projection is in um, any type of simple terms you have? The simplest terms imaginable is imagine being able to die and then you get the chance to come back. It's like a superpower. You get to lie there, slide out of your body, explore the astral plane or the afterlife and the many things that encompass it and come back whenever you like, you know, you experience similar things to the death process and that you can experience your last breath, but essentially it's initiating an out of body experience. Another term is an astral projection experience. And some people are kind of born able to do this. Others have to learn and that can take some time, but I believe that every person can do it. I really do believe that I've seen complete skeptics change their mind overnight <laughs> because they've been able to leave their body. I've seen very angry, stressed out people that usually find learning things hard and being able to do it after some time. And I've seen some savants out there, some people that are very, very, very good, some little geniuses that are able to do it overnight. And so everyone can do it, but essentially it's you dying. And in order for you to slip out of your body, you need to enter into another body called the astral body. Okay. And then you end up once slipping into that vehicle, your astral body, it's essentially an energy body that's layered on top of yours. Once your consciousness shifts into that astral vehicle, you can slide out along with it and then use that to explore the astral realm. You know, there is another form of astral uh, travel 
per se. It's, it's literally called astral travel. It's when you leave the body as an orb, as to, as to supposed to being inside of an astral vehicle. And that comes with its own host of benefits because as a, a fly on the wall, so to speak, you won't be able to see your hands or your feet. You'll just be floating around. You'll be able to get into the bodies of other living things, you know, possession, uh, although most of the time it's by mistake. <laughs> but you'll also be able to merge your consciousness with other elemental factors like the clouds and trees, the environment around you, even insects, I'm sure. So there's some differences there. You can go to, well, you can go to a lot of places with astral travel. You can, you can visit these these other planes of existences much more, actually, than if you were to leave your body with your astral vehicle. You know, most people nowadays, they seek out a astral projection experience because when you're in your astral body, everything feels way more vivid, way more real. Matter of fact, it's not uncommon for people to come back to their body and feel like this is the dream because where they just came from seems so much more vibrant, crisp, and, and just filled with, I don't know how else to say it. It's, it's very overwhelming. And so it's, a, it's an incredible sensory experience once you leave your body and it, it can't be mistaken for a dream or a lucid dream, it's just too real to even go near that idea. But essentially, that's what it is. Thank you for that a beautiful explanation. Um, could you um, explain to us how you first became uh, interested or aware of the process of astral projection? If I uh, understand correctly, it's also um, connected to your passing over when you were younger? Yeah, so weird thing. I actually used to be able to do this uh, when I was a kid. I just had no idea that I was doing it. I was seeing uh, spirits, you know, we also had a dog back then. I was very small and this particular family dog passed away and I would see it walking through the door of my sister's uh, bedroom. I would also see a very tall man that was so tall you'd have to crouch in order to get underneath our door frame. And I later found out who that was because my mum uh, well, told us who he was after some pushing. At first, she was very reluctant to say, but she just kind of said that he was a guardian. He was a friend of my dad's and he had passed away. Uh, matter of fact, he she only told us about that because we managed to capture him on camera, you know, literally doing the same thing I would see every night, just crouching underneath our door. And so in the beginning, I thought I was just seeing ghosts. I, I, I mean, heck, still, actually, there were some experiences where I can't tell because I was so, well, everywhere all at once. Back then, a lot of what I was experiencing, a lot of my, my perceptions that I was kind of tuning into became suppressed. As I got into life, I started learning things, you know, going to school, getting caught up in drama. And I remember as I turned 13, I guess puberty hit me there. You know, I was becoming a little bit more frustrated with everything. And I kind of vaguely feel some kind of a spirit guide telling me that, hey, you know, your time's come. You're about to tune out of these gifts because you're focusing too much on what's going on around you. And I just didn't really listen. And then all of a sudden they became suppressed. I, I just... It's like a dream. I just forgot all of that stuff for a while, you know. And then about three years later, I turned 16. And on my 16th birthday, I end up drowning. Uh, we go to a local quarry. It's a dig site that's filled up with water. It's blocked off to the public. You're not, you're not supposed to be swimming there. It's where they were doing construction. And so a lot of the chemicals had spilled over and into all of the water. The water was blue. For this reason, it had a kind of alluring factor to it, but it was quite toxic, uh, evident by the itching after swimming in it and all the hives that would break out on our bodies, but we didn't care, we were young. And um, 
kind of stupid. So <laughs> my friends would throw out cans of beer down into this quarry and they would swim out to fetch it. I, I was very much an introvert back then and I just, I wouldn't talk about what I was going through, my fears, my worries, my concerns. No, no, I wouldn't tell anyone. So my concerns about swimming, kept I kept them to myself. And so everyone kind of just assumed I was just as good as them as, well, just as good as them at swimming, but I wasn't. And so when everyone went to chase that can of beer that they threw out into the quarry, I fell behind and then they lost sight of me. And it's funny when you, when you're faced with your mortality, you tend to laugh and kind of, you're quite sarcastic. You don't think it's going to happen to you. It's silly. But then after a while, I kind of got the surprise of my life because that sarcasm turned into shock. Like, oh crap, this is really going to happen. I'm really going to, um, like, this is it. And then I remember as I'm swimming on top of the surface of the water, I'm getting very weak, very tired. I'm starting to just kind of dip down a little bit and the water's coming up over my mouth and I start taking in some water into my sinus cavity and it, it tastes disgusting as you can imagine all of the all of the camels chemicals and all of the the chalk you know from where they were digging as it's coming in and going down my throat I feel my body run out of oxygen and because of that, it gets very tight. It starts to cramp up and my body starts to contort in ways that I didn't think were possible. It was very uncomfortable. It was like having someone, a very, very overweight person on top of you, pulling your arms back and twisting it and your fingers. And yeah, it was uh, terrifying. It felt like someone had a noose on top of all of that around my lungs and they were pulling it so tight that it was gripping, cleaving to my heart and just, it's very constricting, suffocating experience. I'm not even under the water yet. After a while, I start to sink and let's see if I can remember was a, some time ago, which one of my senses disappeared first. I believe it was my sense of feeling. No, wait, my sense of taste. I couldn't taste the chemicals anymore. That was a cause for concern. And then I couldn't feel the temperature of the water anymore. And then ooh, as I'm sinking, everything starts to go blank. I remember my smell disappeared along with my taste because they're connected. And then the last thing I remember hearing was my body hitting the quarry so my my hearing was the last to go and then as i'm there everything goes black and i feel this presence behind me this being and it feels like i'm in a, a vast space whilst he's behind me and he says you know if you want you can leave all this behind you can leave your life behind because up until that point my life was quite dysfunctional and it was kind of like having a, a line drawn in the sand. It was like, if you want, you can take one step forward and you never have to go back to that dysfunction. The pain is gone now, he specifically said. And I, I felt like I could trust him. I said, what about my family? What about my mom? It's not, not fair on them if I go so soon. He goes, don't worry about them. They're taken care of. They'll learn from the experience. And they'll even have to, you know, deal with some of it in their afterlife, but it will be a, a growing experience for them. I didn't like that explanation at all. Um, but a large part of me seriously considered just, you know, taking the chance anyway and, and crossing over. As I pick up my foot and I start to cross over that line, I see an image in the sky kind of like if your memories were projected onto clouds. And in the memory, I see my dad. He's telling me that I wouldn't be able to amount to anything. And he's, he does this thing where he gets his fingers, makes me super hard and he starts poking me into the ground until I'm on the floor. And 
I just remember saving, just being so mad because I didn't, I didn't believe him, you know, and I wanted to prove him wrong. I thought to myself, you know, while seeing that memory, yeah, I want to come back because I need to prove him wrong. I haven't had a chance yet to prove him wrong. I'm still only 16, I'm just entering into college and yeah, I'd like the chance to prove him otherwise. Another memory showed up soon after that of my girlfriend at the time and I wanted to see her too. She was spending time in the Caribbean and I wanted to see her face. And so those two memories alone were enough for me to come back. It was weird. It was almost like the environment showed me the right memories, you know, the important ones for me to really make a, a solid, logical decision. So I came back. I can't explain how. Uh, a lot of people ask how I came back. I, I just, I wanted to be here. And all of a sudden I came to on the bottom of the quarry. But I couldn't feel my body anymore. I didn't feel the need to breathe at all. And that concerned me greatly because prior to that experience, I watched a horror movie where someone died in water and they were bound to the, the water that they died in. And I thought, oh great, I'm dead. Just like that horror movie, I'm going to be stuck here for the rest of my eternity. So I kicked off of the floor and I started swimming up. It took a while to get to the surface, but as soon as I hit the surface, everything hit me all at once. My body, my senses, the sound of everything around me, everything turned on and it was very overwhelming. It took me a while to get to the surface of the cliff face. It was only a small cliff face, but it took forever for me to climb. I then threw up once I got to the top, my friends were concerned. A couple of them wanted me to go to the hospital after I told them that I just drowned. Some of them said, how long were you down there for? It's, it's been forever. And I said, I have no clue. My sense of time completely got away from me. And, you know, they weren't all concerning. Some of them laughed, thought I was making it up. Others could clearly tell that I'd just been through a traumatic experience because my whole body went white. After a while, I just kind of sat there and, and tried to process what happened to me. I was like, oh man, I actually just, I actually just died. I can count myself among a, so many other people out there that have had near-death experiences. And, you know, after all of that kind of excitement fizzled out, the only thing on my mind was just, was seeing my girlfriend. I haven't seen her in a long time, you know? And so I end up going home, I see my girlfriend, and uh, it's, it's a, nothing really got better <laughs> after coming back. I found out that she actually cheated on me whilst in the Caribbean, and that kind of sucked, but there's still hope for me to prove my dad wrong. And so I went to bed slept it off and over the week you know during this kind of moving period from high school to college i started having these weird dreams dreams that i was mentioning to you earlier about seeing the family dog walk through the door of my sister's bedroom seeing the tall man crouching underneath the doorway and seeing this weird woman that would just stand right up against my bed. I couldn't see her face. She was too tall. I would just see the buttons on her blouse. She was creepy. I could tell she was old because I could see her, her hands, at least. But I could also feel her envy, her hatred for me. It was very bizarre, and that would happen for at least a month and a half. And I would be so terrified that I would just fall asleep black out out of sheer fear. Some nights I just stayed up all throughout the the night until I could hear my mum making tea downstairs, then I'd get up and just run. You know? I also remembered seeing a troll that would come out of my wall and just point at me until similarly I'd either black out due to fear or stay up all night until I could hear my mum leave her room and start making breakfast for the morning. These memories came up and I couldn't I mean, at the time, all I thought was, okay, I'm seeing dead people. I had a weird past uh, behind me, kind of ahead of me too. 
another memory surfaced. Some more traumatic memories of my dad, of me waiting for him to come upstairs before I'd fall asleep because I would be terrified of him kicking open the door and abusing either me or my brother. He was a heavy drinker and he was kind of un unpredictable. All of these memories kind of merged with the supernatural memories and they too also got suppressed along with the spiritual gifts, you know, the abilities alongside the abuse and all of the tension within my childhood all went away, locked within my mind. But it seemed that drowning started bringing them up to the surface. And then I remember it was our first day of college. The night before I ended up going to sleep after experiencing a little bit of a panic attack upon remembering these memories. And then the next thing I know is I materialize on the foot of my bed. I'm looking at my hand and it's see-through. I'm, I'm getting this roaring tone going throughout my head and it's horrible. I, I feel like I'm about to go deaf. And then I'm in my body. Well, I'm in my bed. And then I go from being in my bed to the foot of my bed, in my bed to the foot of my bed until eventually I'm just there at the foot of my bed looking at this bright light outside my window i approach it because it has this allure to it and as i'm being drawn to this this white light like a moth to the flame i see my mirror on my wall when i see my eyes and they're shrinking to the size of raisins i'm like I'm definitely gonna go blind after this too as well as death i guess i ran out of energy because I end up getting zipped back, pulled away from that light. I turn into somewhat of a light anomaly as I catch my reflection again in the mirror and I get pulled back into my bed. I come to, and based on my limited understanding at the time of astral projection, I just assume that I teleported. I go to college the next day and I tell my brother he doesn't believe me. I feel like a badass because I've just been watching X-Men. I think X-Men First Class came out or another one of those movies out of the franchise and I tell my brother hey I just teleported and he doesn't believe me he says I'm just dreaming I then go on a quest to find out about abilities you know ones that sit well with me what can the human actually do in the realm of possibility I start off with the mind because I know the mind can do a lot I start finding monks that can levitate and do other spectacular feats. And at one point I find a monk that could burn things with his hands. And he momentarily uh, mentioned how he could do some other things in the afterlife because he gets his energy to a certain point, but it didn't quite land. And so I just went back to, you know, trying to teleport. I found a Russian man that was teaching people online. I found his archives. Kind of like I was looking at the deep web type of situation. I had to really dig in there to find his footage. But he used to teach teleportation. And so I, I started doing what I thought I was doing. I started learning the ways of teleporting the body. But nothing was happening. After a while, I found that the more memories came up, the more I started having these weird experiences where I would be starting from my bed, at the foot of my bed, or in another room in the house entirely. It wasn't until I came across a video talking about Professor Xavier on YouTube that I realized what I was doing because his main ability is astral projection. And it looked exactly like what I was going through. Sorry to interrupt the podcast. Hope you're doing well and enjoying the show. The last two minutes, uh, Ryan was having a bit of audio issues because of the air conditioner. So if you heard, you heard a little bit of uh, muffled sound in the background, it was just his air conditioner. And we had to uh, wait for the air conditioner to turn off and then continue the podcast. So just giving you an explanation, continue to enjoy the show. Thank you so much. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Give me a good rating on, on Spotify, please. <laughs> Professor Xavier was exhibiting the same ability, exhibiting, it's written into his character, he's an expert. And then I found another uh, Marvel superhero that did the same thing, Doctor Strange. 
So naturally, now I really want to do it. And so I start trying to remember the experiences that I had because it seemed like the memories that were coming up were putting my body into the same state, which allowed me to leave my body because now I know what was happening. I was leaving my body in my bed and then materializing at the foot of my bed. And so I, at first I just, I kind of let the memories come up the way they usually would. And then I'd lean into them a little bit more. I ended up creating a whole system just to allow the memories to come up and to really experience them again. And then just as expected, I started astral projecting that following night because I had shifted my body into that same state. And I thought this was pretty cool because now I was getting there most of the time, although the method was kind of problematic, seeing as it would lead to subtle forms of anxiety, you know? <laughs> So I ended up creating different systems based on what was happening to my mind and just really getting into self-study, you know, what would happen to my body if I remembered this particular memory, what would happen to my body if I left the door open slightly ajar so that I can see outside of my bedroom, because when my dad, and this is something I, I later found out when my dad would come upstairs, my attention was fixed on the door and that would keep my awareness outside of my body as I fell asleep, which is one of those common tropes of, of astral projection, uh, mind awake, body asleep. And so my upbringing, not only was I able to see spirits, but the dysfunction within my upbringing allowed me to separate out of body. And so I started putting together different methods once it incorporated that aspect of it all, as well as the expectation. And over time, I leaked these methods out to the public on a platform, as well as documenting, you know, while I was documenting my experiences. It took a while, maybe about four years until I came up with a method that allowed me to astral project all of the time. And that one really did, uh, really did help because it kept me fixed into an astral projection state, allowing me to leave the body whenever I wanted. And at that point I'd already created courses and I was already known for astral projection. So I feel like I'm getting ahead of the story a little bit. Well, that's the abridged version. I died and brought back memories. I used them in order to reverse engineer what was happening to me. And then I learned how to do it on purpose. <laughs>